Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice 35 footer boy. She's, she's really, they've added a lot to this to give you a nice woody feel down here. Now, out of all the boats that are available for sale these days, I think this might rank as one of the best on the market today. Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey Randy! Captain! Oh buddy, come on! Oof. I'm doing the weather today for you. Where are you? Oh, here. Oh, here you are. We're down here today at uh, the Safe Harbor uh, Marina in Westbrook, Connecticut. This, to many of the old timers, is known as Pilot's Point. And we're down here to look at a uh, another Pearson. But uh, right now, I gotta tell you, we're having a real struggle. So if I, if it looks like the screen is moving as you watch this episode, it's because my esteemed videographer here is gonna be blown <laughs> off the dock here any minute. Uh, today, we've got a 1972 uh, Pearson uh, 35. Uh, interesting boat in that it was the longest running of any of the Pearson's uh, fleet. We know about Pearson because we've talked about it before, but two cousins, Clinton and Everett Pearson, put this idea together and started this company and they went out and found a designer, Carl Alberg, to design them the old Triton 28. And they took that down to the New York Boat Show, were so successful they took 17 orders at the show and they came back uh, with their orders in hand and started producing boats. Uh, it was really going along well for a couple of years and Grumman uh, Allied Industries came along. They started creating new models and they came up with the Ariel and they came up with the Pearson 35 and one of the more famous boats at the time was the Invicta which was a our old friend Bill Tripp design and won uh, the Bermuda race, smallest fiberglass boat to ever do so. Uh, interesting thing about this boat is they built about 500 of them and it was the longest run of any Pearson design, which was 14 years. And they pr produced over 500, 515 was one number I saw over that period of time. Wow. In 1964, uh, Grumman financed 100,000 square feet of, of building and they started to crank out the boats. Also in 1964, Grumman went out and found a, uh, a, a new designer, an in-house designer, a man named William Shaw. He had worked with Sparkman and Stevens and he eventually ended up creating I think some 53 different designs. They had expanded their co uh, operation to 240,000 square feet and they were building much bigger boats. The largest was the uh, 530, which was a 53-footer. Nice catch. I've sailed against it and uh, uh, it's a very fast cruising design. How'd you do against it? Let me go on to the next <laughs> subject right here. <laughs> the thing about the boat we're going to see today, it was really the very first uh, hull uh, design that the Pearsons came out with that went into mass production. The concept here was to take over for the uh, Alberg 35. They created a center boarder instead of a keel boat. With the center board up she's only 3.75 feet of depth. She's noted for having a really large cockpit which is great for entertaining nine feet long. It's a nice all-around boat. Not all-around cruising, not all-around racing, just a really comfortable family boat and that's why they sold 500 of them. So uh, if we can Get out of this windbreak right now and take a chance to get down the dock. Yeah, let's brave it. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Yeah. Permission to come aboard. Oh, hey, Randall, come on aboard. I got down here ahead of you a little bit. And. Uh, I'm just luxuriating in this cockpit and also trying to stay out of the hurricane that's blowing right now. Whoa, we just had a flying dog come by. <laughs> so this is a really, uh, really nice big cockpit. You know, and you spend uh, 75, 80% of your life on a sailboat in the cockpit. And look at the height of the combings. Now this is, this is, this reaches me, right? We like this. This makes me very happy because I'm not going to get flipped out of here. And he's also on this particular boat has these special closed cell foam uh, cockpit cushions, nicely fitted. They've got they're all monogrammed and everything. And I'm sitting on one right now, and it's very comfortable, but it's not big and floppy, and it doesn't give. These are these are great, and they're custom made. Notice uh, the wheel is forward. This cockpit. Yeah, it's 
That kind of caught you on guard a little bit, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I haven't seen that before. Well, uh, Pearson did it, Ericsson did it with a number of their boats, and it's a great cruising concept and a racing concept as well. First of all, as a cruiser, you're going along here, your partner's below uh, making a sandwich, right? Or uh, preparing maybe some Denny Moore, something like that. And they can hand it right up to you uh, while you're at the helm. Now, I'm sitting at the helm right now. We've got all the, the, the standard GPS controls up here and radar and all that. And we have the compass in a, in a nice binnacle here, nice Richie compass. Look at that. Handsome and really nicely polished in great shape. Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm totally protected. Now, the covers are over the front of this Dodger right now for the uh, early winter, so you can't see the light in the view, but you're going to have a terrific view forward and have availability to the galley and your nav station and you also have your instruments and look at the uh, look at the nice suit of, of almost brand new ray marine instruments this boat's got a lot of new stuff in it including right over your head if you were to reach up into the sail cover you would feel a mainsail that was made about three years ago you have the helmsman right here and he's got good control on what he can see you can actually even see over this Dodger, if he's at least six foot one, <laughs> and uh, obviously through it, and it's, and it's big enough, that Dodger will also fold down out of the way completely. Uh, but I can see my instruments, I can see below what's going on, and if I'm just cruising too, I'm well protected um, from the elements. Any spray coming up. There's side curtains that aren't on right now on either side <clears throat> that'll make this another little half cabin. Actually, one little trick. And you might be able to do it on this boat, I don't know. We had on the PB a drop curtain that came right down from the back of this and it turned this into a little wheelhouse. Well, you got a little seat back here for anybody that's bored uh, sailing anywhere else. And uh, you can also put them back here. They can tune up your outboard while they're sitting back here. Give them a couple tools, a new spark plug, uh, check the gas. But this Tohatsu comes with this boat and there's a Portland Pudgy up there, which is a little dinghy. It's kind of an interesting rig. Uh, it actually has a little sailing rig to it and it will act as a survival boat. But that Pudgy will also sit very tightly between these two davits batch here, which are anchored like granite. The main traveler is right here for you. Nice big uh, traveler control lines. And it's all fresh new line. Popped open the two hatches back here. We like big hatches. These are again left over from the days of sail lockers, right? We've got our big uh, gusher whale pump here, see? So we, so we can pump out, really do some serious pumping on the bilge. But this is a very big deep locker back here and it goes way forward. So we don't have a quarter berth in this boat on either side, so you do have a lot more room for storage. Let's look on the port side here. Obviously we have our battery room here and all the uh, random uh, cushions that are here for the, the cockpit. House batteries and starting batteries, and it's got something to control heat down here to keep the heat down when they're charging. Let's head, let's head forward, what do you say? All right, let's do it. Really nice deck up here. Nice and broad, you probably noticed that walking up here. The shrouds are outboard, they're not gonna trip you coming up inboard there. And uh, uh, a really good place to lie down in the sun. We've got a manual windlass here, and uh, all the normal accoutrement here. It's got a nice rope no anchor right up in the bow roller here, and a nice custom wooden bow roller uh, arrangement has been set up there. On the bow, we've got a roller furling Genoa. And is the Genoa new as well? Uh, the Genoa is new as well. Wow. All new sails pretty much. There's a nice strong bollard up here. And this is a little beefier than you normally find, but that'll take care of any of your dock lines coming from either side. Kind of old old, old time sort of thing as opposed to a cleat. Yeah, looks like a power uh, freshwater hose connector. Good eye, good yeah. eye. There's a wash down for you. That's handy. Coming along the deck, we just check out the non-skid. It's fairly mild. I'd like maybe a little more grip, but that's that's going to work really well. Forward hatch is not a, a, a bomar or anything. This is molded, uh, translucent, uh, original equipment. And that's how they used to make them in the old days. We got a couple of derayed boxes, one port and starboard. And she does have a nice boom vang here. 
to help control the shape on your mainsail. That doesn't look stock from 1971. No, no, I think this was probably added on since then. Notice we've got lazy jacks on the main. You remember lazy jacks? Sure. What Ooh. are they for? Lazy jacks are set up so you don't have to have a stack pack necessarily. That's that's a, a sort of a Doyle invention. That had a couple of big uh, pieces of canvas come up that would end up like an envelope, and you just drop your main into that. But prior to that, these lines will catch and keep the sail when you drop it, lying right down on top of the boom. Then you come around, put some sail ties around it, tighten it up, and then eventually put your sail cover on. Why do you say we take a look below? I think this may surprise us. Randy. Yeah. Come on down. Oh, thanks. This is a, a really very nice, very comfortable, very livable cruising 35-footer. Uh, her 10-foot beam sort of belies the amount of room down here. Uh, and right now we're sort of sailing in the slip, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we are rocking and rolling What's a little bit. What's it blowing out there? Must be gusting to 30, I think, right now. We've got uh, a nice big L-shaped settee, really handsome fabric, very tastefully done. All these boats originally came with a lot of Formica showing, and they've, they've done some nice uh, covering of the Formica with these uh, teak bulkheads. You really don't get that uh, plastic bottle look uh, with this boat. This settee is only pulled out so normal sitting. There's about another half of this width to pop out, and it's going to give you a really nice sea berth here, and it's nice to have a big pilot berth. Look how wide this pilot berth is right here. I mean, Sea Dog has you know, got a ton of room at the, at the front end even. A lot of nice drawer storage here, pretty deep, and uh, it's all drop-in locks. I'm going to put the table down here, and it drops down very nicely. We've got uh, the uh, cabin sole open up here a little bit. And we see this great big thing growing here underneath. You know what that is? Mm, that's tough to say. It runs a whole length there. That's the housing for the centerboard. Ah, oh, that makes sense. And this boat only draws three and uh, three quarter feet normally. You put the board down, it's about a seven foot draft. So yep. you can pick up another four feet or so. Uh, there's a number of little chambers in here around this. Some have got some pockets of water, and they've got a little hand pump to help uh, clean out the pockets of water. That's all that's for. We did notice that this is not a solid uh, teak and holly sole on the floor. We thought it was at first. That's how good it looks. But it's really great, and it's been easily uh, put in and could be easily repaired if need be. Now, these boats all came with an Atomic 4 originally. And uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one little uh, drawback to the engine's bit is the access to the engine is uh, fairly tight, <laughs> to say the least. This one's in nice condition in there, nice shape. Uh, he's got a serpentine belt here on the uh, front of the engine here to run his alternator and everything. And that'll keep, uh, you, you won't end up with a whole lot of, of black soot all over your engine. Yeah. But you've got your water strainer, all the stuff you need right here. Over here in the galley, one side, you notice we don't have a, an actual chart table. You've got a place to spread out your chart right here. And he's got a couple of chart tools, pencils, and so forth. And here's the whole original Pearson Yachts control panel uh, with all the circuit breakers uh, lined up for lighting various shift functions. As I look up here, of course, I see my wonderful grab rails, right? Either side, we can, we can get those going no matter which direction we're walking in the boat. Once you stop navigating, you're gonna go cooking. And, oh, yep, they're, they're a well-defined boat here. They understand what's necessary. Got a little spring load on the top, and you just punch that, just punch this little top, and the top drops right down. Uh, fortunately, it's not one of those 25-pound tops, so I wouldn't <laughs> I'd be short some more fingers. We've got a microwave oven here, and uh, this is one thing I'd kind of like to have on a boat. You can run these off inverters, and uh, it doesn't take all that much power. And, you know, for a quick frozen meal or something, it's really nice to have on a boat. Good storage, handy storage locker for glassware, and all in nice little vented cabinets, you see? And that has a, a catch back in this hole here. It's a little tricky to see, but he's got his um, uh, life jackets stowed back there. And it's also a natural place to put, sort of jam in your foul weather gear. On the other side, whoa, look at the size of this sink. That placement reminds me of something. Ah, yes, the sea breeze. Sea breeze, yep. Sea breeze, where you used to come down the, out of the companionway and step into the sink. Yep. 
this yeah. is all offset a little bit, and they do have a nice pad here to remind you where your foot should go, okay? So you're out of a very wide hatch, uh, not too wide, but, but wide enough, and you can come down a step here, and two steps down to the cabin sole. But hot and cold pressure water, we've got a little fresh water pump here. Oh boy, our old ubiquitous <laughs> pot and pan storage, right? Never have too many places for pots and pans. And some more electronic stuff over here. Too. Yes, we do. Uh, and we've got a water heater switch, and it's probably a 110 volt. And uh, there's another there's another minder up here, which I can't quite read. It's a little dark. Uh, Randy, we've also got in our galley here uh, a really nice spanking new uh, Mediterranean three burner propane stove and oven. And we've mentioned gimbling, and this one happens to be loose right now, so I can show you. So when the boat's healing, this will this will counterbalance against the heel and allow you to keep your soup in the pot. Pretty important. And when you're not sailing and you're just making proverbial sandwiches, look at all of our counter space. Really tidy storage. Nice little grab mats in there to keep things from sliding around. Then we come around to the other side here. And again, more, more locker space here. And it's got double latches. And look, whew, lobster pots. All right. This guy's a lobsterman, huh? Maybe even more of the same up here. Um, and you know, when you get hungry at sea, oh my God, it's good to have amongst your Crayola and your various toys an extra can of tinny more. Come on forward here. This box that we're looking at is the head. And it's all been covered too. That was originally all uh, plastic or for mic or something. And they've done a nice little space saving uh, item here as you've noticed. We've got a nice sliding door. Oh, that's a nice touch. Isn't that nice? And no swinging doors to hit you. No. And uh, there is our head. So we got a sink and we got a nice mirror in there. It's a little low for the captain, but <gasps> look at the big mirror over the sink. Yeah, that's very nice, huh? CQ worthy. Um, I see a shower, it looks like. Uh, let's see, there is a shower curtain right here and the uh, handheld comes out of the sink. You're absolutely right. Let me see the CQ inside there for What's scale. That? Oh yeah, I will give you the uh, measuring stick. Six one plus, maybe six two headroom in the in the head. See, look at that. I put two, that's six three almost in the head. And we're offshore and I just uh, get myself comfortable and uh, I can brush my teeth here. I could even have a shower right here. That wouldn't be bad. Before we head back there, let's just take a look at this hanging lock. Look at the size of that. And look down uh, below. Can you see how dry that is in there? And how everything is painted. The ceilings are painted. The sole is painted. There are plastic port lights here, but they're in great shape. There's no crazing. And there's screens on all these too. Nice to have screens. Now, this is, this is really interesting. Uh, look at the size of this. Uh, forward cabin here. Well, there's a great big filler here. That's that's uh, six inches if it's an inch and That's gonna be your filler piece if you want it and then you will have truly a um, Almost a king-size bed and notice something What do you see there some square ends? It is square almost almost completely so What they've done is they did not push this four peak berth area into the bow as far as they could, so they gave you, they probably took away a shower stall. Now, what would you like? Would you like to have a shower stall, or would you like to have, not be kicked at night, all night long? Looks like your uh, producer's got your pillow situation squared away. I think maybe a woman's had her touch in here. Um, don't misunderstand me, but um, men could have too, but uh, this, is, this has a really nice, um, and it has a nautical motif to the, crabs, seahorses, and size. Look at the uh, nice drawer storage here. We have a, a big hatch we saw top side with the fabricated uh, hatch cover. So what do you think? Should I? I think you gotta we, give it do a we shot. It? Do we check it? Yeah. This is the end of the day, I think. Yeah. What do you think? All right. Have a How good do you like this boat? Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice 35 footer boy. She's, she's really. Wait, have we seen any other 35 foot boats, by the way? Well, yeah, Vinda 50. Oh. Now, the Vindo had a little aft cabin, but this has got a much bigger cockpit, and it's a little roomier 
they've added a lot to this to give you a nice woody feel down here. I like the boat a lot. I can see why they've sold uh, over 500 of these. All right, looks like it's a siesta. Uh, Randy, I've got a nice little slider here for you. If you wouldn't mind just uh, sliding yeah. that right over. I know how it is. It's kind of like the head door. It works very nicely. Siesta time. And uh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Hmm. Day. Uh, it was a pretty nippy blowy day in Westbrook and we had a chance to look at a Pearson 35. Now Pearson 35s were one of the first Pearson boats that the Pearson brothers started to build en masse. It was shoal draft so you could sail it all over the Chesapeake Bay. Just a little over three and a half feet of, of draft. How nice is that? And a center border so when you want to go to weather you can do it. Now out of all the boats that are available for sale these days I think this might rank as one of the best on the market today. We know she floats, right? Oh yeah. And uh, a solid design. I'm going to give her six right away. And on top of that, for the super job of maintaining it, I'm going to give it another three. What do you say? Yeah, sounds great. What's that add up to? Uh, 19. 19. 19 for a lovely Pearson 35. One of 500, but maybe one of the best ones out there. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes. A little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now. And I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha